So today we're going to start a new topic. It's called Hooke's Law, and it deals with springs. So let's draw, uh, well first of all let's just explain before we start drawing what Hooke's Law is. It's the relationship between the force on a spring and its displacement or elongation. It can be elongation and it can also be compression. Uh, okay, either. So let's draw a, a diagram here. So let's say that this is a ceiling and we have a spring. And this is kind of like the before. picture and now here let's draw the after picture there's the ceiling again let's see if I can make that straighter and now in this case we have attached a mass to the bottom of it so if we measure the distance here. That distance is, I'm going to call it delta x. It is the distance by which the spring has been elongated. And the relationship between the force on the spring, so first of all, before we continue, let's uh, draw the free body diagram of this mass here. So here it is. Here's the free body diagram. We have what's touching it plus gravity. The only thing that's touching it is the spring. And the spring is pulling up. There's the force of the spring. And I'll, I'll discuss <coughs> which direction this force is. I can give you a little rule for that. And that's the only thing touching it. So then you say plus gravity. And of course, gravity is going to be going down. Now this spring is, this mass is just hanging there. It's not accelerating. So if we say um, some, here, let me just erase this. So we've got summation of the forces is equal to F net. Now we have to choose a positive direction. It really doesn't matter. But I will say, let's say for example, if up is being positive. I could have picked down. It really doesn't make a much difference in this case. So I'll say spring force minus gravity equals MA. And of course, since I know it's not moving, the velocity is equal to zero. It's just at rest in, a, in the stretched state. I know that this is now zero. So I know that Fs minus Fg equals zero. And therefore, I also know that Fs is equal to Fg. So these two forces are equal and opposite. Now, we all know what the force of gravity is. The force of gravity is equal to mg. But what's the spring force equal to? So this is where Hooke's law comes in. Hooke's law states the relationship, the mathematical relationship between 
the spring force and the delta x elongation is given by the equation k delta x. Now, some textbooks will write this as f equals negative kx. I don't particularly like this equation because one, to me, this elongation or compression is, is not a position as in x, it's a, it's a change in position from the neutral. This, this is, th this, uh, dr the reason I drew this as before is because that's considered the neutral length of the spring without any mass hanging on it. Okay? Uh, but I don't like this equation. I like this one better. That negative symbol here is supposed to help you with the direction, but honestly, uh, I'm going to give you guys a little blurb here, and I'll write down star. Elongated springs pull and compressed springs push. And that's it. That's all you need to remember. And now you can figure out the direction of the force from those two very simple statements. I think they're kind of intuitive too. If you've ever held a spring in your hand. Um, in fact, I have one here. And here it is. Whoops. Let's try that again. So here is a spring. I can bring it close. You can see that there's a mass hanging on the bottom of it. This is a spring scale. If I take the mass off, the, sp the spring stops its, you know, it doesn't, it's not, that's its neutral position. And then if I hook the mass on top of it, and now you can see that it stretches down from here, from it was up here. So uh, that's the example that I have in the, in the diagram right now. That's called a spring scale. In any case, let's continue here. And I want to give you the opposite example of before and after with compression. So here would be the before. And we would have a spring like this. And then the after would look like this. And now on top of this, we would place the mass. And now I'll change colors again to represent the delta. So now we draw our dotted line. So this is where the mass attaches, right? And that location's right here now. So now, that distance there is our delta x. And in this case, it's not an elongation, it's a compression. And if it's compressed, now the spring is going to push. This, the, the, the equation here that I've written still applies. It's the exact same equation. Nothing changes, except now it's a, the, the force is pushing instead of pulling. So if I was to do the free body diagram in this case, I would have spring force going this way, and I would have gravity going this way. And once again, it's the same situation as before. It's not moving. And so 
our uh, net force is zero because the acceleration is zero. And the one thing which I haven't stated yet, okay, so on this side I forgot to write it here. If this is Hooke's law, then on the left-hand side we'd have k delta x being substituted in for fs. Because I'm, all I'm doing is I'm putting this equation into there. So we now know that k delta x is equal to mg in the case above. And guess what? It's also, it's this exact same, uh, notice the free body diagram above and the free body diagram below. They're exactly the same. So we would have the spring force is equal to the force of gravity. So k delta x is also equal to mg in this case as well. Now the one thing I haven't discussed here are what are the uh, e variables in Hooke's law. So Fs obviously is the spring force. And that is in Newtons. Okay? K is the spring constant. And its units are newtons per meter. And delta x is the displacement. Very similar to delta d, in fact. Um, and it can be, like I said, it can be either elongation or compression, how much the length of the spring has changed from its neutral position or from its neutral length. And the unit of that is in meters. Now, having said this, if you look at this equation, Fs, the force of the spring, is equal to k delta x, this is actually a linear relationship. So that means if we were to plot, as in a graph, of force of the spring versus delta x, we would get a straight line. And the slope of that line, right, just like, just like uh, y equals mx, the, in this case, you know, the plus b part is 0. So this is, the, this is a linear relationship. Force of the spring is equal to k delta x. So the slope equals the spring constant. So let's go back. This is just kind of like a little mathematical explanation of what this equation is here, the Hooke's Law equation. Let's go back now and let us uh, give a couple of example questions that we would be able to understand how to use all this. Okay, so here's the question. I wrote it out. Uh, a mass is hung from the ceiling. It stretches by six centimeters when a three kilogram mass is hung. What is the spring constant of the spring? So let's draw a picture of this. You can, you can, if you want, you can pause the video now and try and see if you can figure it out. Uh, it's up to you. But this is a, a very simple uh, problem. So, and they are, and these Hooke's law problems are they're not complicated. So, here is the mass hung, and again I can draw the free body diagram again. Here's the spring force. Here is gravity. Summation of the forces equals F net. Summation of the forces equals zero because F net is MA and A is zero. So we've got, let's pick up as positive again, FS minus FG equals zero. So FS equals FG just like before. Spring force is K delta x, fg is mg. 
And now we're asking to find the spring constant. So I can solve algebraically for k. That's just going to be mg divided by delta x. And I'm given the mass as 3 kilos. g is 9.8. And delta x, in this case, is 6 centimeters. Now be careful. 6 centimeters, oops, 6 centimeters is equal to 0 0.06 meters. We have to keep things in standard units. The mass is in kilograms. So we need to put 0 0.06 here because there's 100 centimeters in one meter, so it's two decimal places to the left. And if we do that, our answer will be 490 newtons per meter. And that's K, and that's our spring constant. So let's try one more question, but this time, Let's flip it around, and instead of the spring being stretched, let's have the spring be compressed. So here's the next problem. I'll write it out for you first. So here's the question. It says, what mass needs to be placed on a coil spring with a spring constant K of 3,500 newtons per meter for it, the spring, to compress by four centimeters. Go ahead, pause the video now, and see if you can figure out this one. It's very similar to the one before. OK, so here's the solution to this problem. When we put the mass on top of it, let's draw a picture of it. Here's the mass. Here is the spring. and from the original position, let's say, for example, if the spring is like that, the distance between here and here is going to be 4 centimeters. Now be careful, because this is equal to 0 0.04 meters. We always need standard units. Um, if I draw the free body diagram here, what's touching it plus gravity? Well, I have the spring that's pushing up. And I also have gravity pulling down. And I also know that the acceleration is 0. So summation of the forces equals F net. F, and I'll say up again, is positive. Fs minus Fg equals Ma. And now I'll plug in, you know, well, I know it's equal to 0 because A is 0. So I know that Fs has to e be equal and opposite to the spring force, has to be equal and opposite to the force of gravity. And the spring force is defined by Hooke's law to be K delta X. And Fg is just equal to Mg. So now, notice these vertical ones with no acceleration, um, they're pretty easy. Right? So now, what are we asking for? We're asking for the mass. What is, what is the mass m? So let me take this equation and solve for m. And I'll go k delta x divided by g equals m. Now I can plug my values in. 3,500 times 0 0.04 divided by 9.8. And that's going to give me 14.3 kilos. And that's the mass that is required to be placed on the spring to compress it by 4 centimeters. Hope you got that. Correct. 
Okay, let's try another question. So let's, uh, let's get this one out of the way. And I'll write out the question. Here it is. So my question is here. I've written it out. It says, an elevator accelerates up at 2.5 meters per second squared. A disco ball of mass 12 kilograms is hung from the ceiling in the elevator. If the spring constant is equal to 160 newtons per meter, and the neutral length of the spring is 30 centimeters, how far will the disco ball be from the ceiling while this elevator is accelerating up? So if I draw a picture of this, here's the elevator. And we've got the neutral spring being uh, 30 centimeters. But with the mass on it, and the disco ball there, how far is the disco ball from the ceiling of the elevator if the elevator is accelerating up at 2.5 meters per second squared? Go ahead and see if you can solve this. Pause the video now. So the solution here, let's draw the free body diagram. Here's the disco ball. We've got the spring force going up, and we've got gravity going down. What's touching it plus gravity? And therefore, we'll also say up is positive. Um, summation of the forces is equal to F net. And we have Fs minus Fg equaling ma. Now in this case, a is not zero. Uh, and what are we looking for here? So let's, let's put in, let's plug in our um, equations for spring force. That's k delta x, gravity is mg, and then we have ma. Now notice it says how far will the disco ball be from the ceiling? So essentially, we're going to have to go, if we draw, finish this off, this part's delta x here. So once we find delta x, we can add that to our initial 30, and we'll be able to figure out the answer. Because this distance here is going to equal the 30 plus the delta x. So let's solve delta x here. So I'm going to say k delta x equals ma plus mg, because I'll take this term to the other side, and it becomes a plus. I can then also factor out an m and go a plus g. And then to get uh, delta x by itself, I'll simply divide both sides by k. And I'm done. Now, I'll take this equation and put my values in. So I have delta x is equal to m, which was 12 uh, kilos, plus an acceleration of 2.5, plus 9.8. Okay, And also, just to be clear, uh, don't forget, this acceleration here is positive. It's a positive acceleration because it's up. But my g, I'm not going to put a negative value of g for in for g. Why? Because I've already placed my force of gravity going down. And that's, and that's why I had this negative symbol here. Okay, So that's going to be in dynamics, remember g is positive 9.8, and you put the it pointing down. That's what accounts for its negative direction. Now the k is uh, 100 and I believe it was 160 here. And if I put that through my cap, so that gives me 0.92.
0 0.92 and that's meters so therefore this original part remember be careful here this is not uh, 30 meters this is 0 0.3 meters so now I would just go 0 0.9 plus 0.3 and I would get my final answer of the distance from the ceiling is 0.9, which is my uh, delta 9.2, which is my delta x, plus my original neutral length. We'll call that, I can just call that x, and that was 0.3, which gives me an answer of 1.22 meters from the ceiling. So here is my question. A truck with a constant velocity is dragging, a truck moving with a constant velocity is dragging a crate of mass 25 kilograms behind it with a spring. If the spring has a neutral length of two meters, how far behind the truck is the crate if the spring constant is 360 newtons per meter and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the ground is 0.4. Here is a picture of what I am kind of describing here. Here's the steering wheel, here's the headlights, here's the wheels, here's the flatbed, and here's the back of the truck. Here's the spring, okay, and it's connected to a mass, a crate, and here's the ground, and the, the neutral length of the spring is two meters, but obviously it's stretched in this position because uh, it's being dragged. So the question is, how far is the uh, crate, what is this distance delta D, or I, could, I shouldn't say delta D, what is this distance D behind, between the truck and the crate? Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. Don't forget to do the free body diagram. Okay, in order to do this problem, uh, we need to draw the free body diagram here. So there is the crate. And there's going to be a few forces on this crate. So let's just go to this color here. Now we know what's touching it. The spring is touching it, and that's going to pull it. We know that it's being dragged to the left, so we know friction is going to go to the right. What's touching it plus gravity? Well. The ground is touching it, that's what's creating the friction force. The, the spring is touching it, that's what's pulling it to the left. But also, the, the ground is also has a normal force up. And then of course there's gravity down. Those are all the forces. Now, vertically, the normal force and the gravity force cancel, because there's no acceleration vertically. But also, uh, if I analyze this thing horizontally, summation of the forces equals F net horizontally now, those also cancel out because, and if I say this direction is positive to the left because that's the direction the truck is moving, I would say Fs minus force of friction equals Ma and this is zero because it's constant velocity that was given, right? As soon as you see constant velocity, you know acceleration is zero. So now I know, and therefore I know that the spring force has got to equal the friction force. Now the spring force is gonna be K delta X and the friction force is mu K mg. Now I'm looking here for the delta x, and the delta x is here, okay? That's what I'm looking for right there. 
Now I can solve that by saying delta x equals mu k mg divided by k. And my numbers here are 0.4 for mu, 25 for m, 9.8 for g divided by, I believe it was 360 for the spring constant. And when I put those in, I'm going to get an answer of 0 0.27 meters. Now I know how much it elongates by, but my d is equal to the original, this d here is equal to the original length plus the amount that it gets elongated by. So the distance between the crate and the truck is 2.27 meters. And that's the end of this problem.